so I can tell you um, what it means to me to be standing here um, in front of the graduates and their families and their friends and the leadership of the university who bestowed this incredible honor on George and me. It is the privilege of a lifetime and it means so much to us to be back in Cape Town to be at our alma mater, to sit on the Jamie steps, which we did this week, just the way we did it 50 years ago. Um, it's truly, truly incredible. I want to thank the leadership, um, and I also want to thank those who are joining us, family um, and friends, our two sons, a cousin, um, they've come from halfway around the world to be here for us on this important occasion, so thank you. So, so when I go back 55 years, as you heard, um, or something like 55 years, I got my BS and my honors degree here. And it's interesting that when I reflected on who was really one of my role models, um, it turns out to be Sir Aaron Klug, and you might wonder who he is. Well, he did his master's degree at UCT and then went on to Cambridge University and worked in the very same group that Dean Lewis happened to mention. Rosalind Franklin was a colleague. We did not rehearse this, I promise you. We did not know that we would both be talking about Rosalind Franklin. So she and Erin Klug went on um, to develop ways to visualize molecules. And Erin um, then, some years later, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry and Rosalind Franklin again lost out. Well, we are in an age now where women don't need to lose out, and all the power to you graduates. <laughs> so one of the things Aaron Klugman mentioned was the good knowledge, good knowledge that he received while he was in the physics department here um, at UCT. And likewise, I received a lot of my good knowledge while I learned physics and chemistry and microbiology right here at UCT. And I'll be forever thankful for that background. I also learned my work ethic and my will to succeed right from here. So that was then, and what about now? So as a molecular biologist, I am well familiar with what goes on here at the Infectious Disease Institute for Molecular Medicine, which also houses the Desmond Tutu Center for HIV Research. It is a world-class organization. The publications are in world-class journals, and it is an absolute inspiration to see these skilled scientists helping the local communities in developing novel pharmaceuticals, vaccines for HIV, tuberculosis, and delivering them to the world. This is indeed an institution of which we should all be proud, and we should salute ourselves. I want to end by talking about somebody who was with me here 55 years ago, um, and that was my very proud mother. My mother arrived here, um, in 1936, robbed of a high school education because she was fleeing Nazi Germany, and there were very, very humble and difficult beginnings. 
but she was my role model. She taught me how to look ahead, how to make each loss into an opportunity, and we had plenty of those. And as you graduates move forward with all the power to succeed, one thing is for sure, you will have losses. We all do in all of our lives. And I want you to think back on the words of my mom, that each loss is an opportunity. And with that, I want to congratulate you, young men and young women in the audience, for arriving on this awesome day and having the world at your fingertips. Congratulations. Somebody once told me, never follow a really good talk. <laughs> so I, I would like to thank the university also. This is a, I'm very grateful and very honored for this uh, award. Somebody said to me yesterday, you still have a South African accent for being away so long. That's fantastic. I said, of course. I'm not going to get rid of my South African accent. So. The first thing I want to do is congratulate the Springboks. They just won the World Championship. <laughs> what a team. An amazing final and an integrated team. When I was here, there were no blacks in the team. And I'm very proud of that last point. I played rugby for UCT. I think I played in the sixth team. Six teams down, yeah. I was very proud. I couldn't walk on, you know, Mondays and Tuesdays, but that's okay. I lived on campus and um, during my bachelor's degree. And I'm very proud of this country, this university, and especially Mandela. He's really a hero of mine. I've read uh, his books. I've read the recent book, Letters from Jail. I advise you all to read that book. It's an amazing book. They've collected all his letters. And the first 50 letters tells you how strong he was and what he was doing in the next 27 years. He was planning it right from the beginning. And in the last 50 letters, he tells you how he was going to basically take over the country and run the country in a very democratic and ordered way. So, uh, he really has a set of values that I really admire. He, he, he was a wonderful person. And I see today, I had to sign the book in which he's also signed that book. And he also got an honorary degree from Cape Town. So, that's very special for me. So, I want to thank people first. And then I'm going to say a few minutes, uh, tell you a little bit about my thoughts about success and what I want the students to think about. I just want, before I go ahead, I'm, I'm very pleased to speak also to the parents. They should be congratulated because they lived through a lot of stuff too. So I think. <laughs> First, I want to thank Mamogethi Fankeng, Vice President, honoring my work, my students, my postdocs, my collaborators, and especially my wife. Um, I don't think we would be here if it weren't for the collaboration and the context of us working together. So even though our fields only cover about 10%, that was major for us. And of course, any more than that, we probably wouldn't talk to each other. So 10% was fi fine. Um, I also like to thank Dean Lewis, who just gave, Alison Lewis, who just gave this beautiful talk. She's a major, major force in engineering. People know her in the United States. And I must say, uh, Alison, thank you very much for all of this, especially your talk and your nomination and everything else. And also, I'd like to thank the, the uh, council who voted for us to, to receive these, these very wonderful awards. 
I'm very honored and thanks. I'd like to also thank Her Sue Harrison, who hosted me here in terms of my lecture this week on Alzheimer's, and also Colleen Jeffra, who basically organized the whole trip. She was amazing. Now, I want to thank my professors. You see, the first professor, uh, Donald Carr, was the head of department when I was here 57 years ago. And Heinrich Buhr was here. And he taught me what we call in chemical engineering transport phenomena, how things move, how uh, heat moves, how uh, diffusion, convection, and also fluid mechanics. And that has been the basis, the foundation of every single thing I've ever done since then. It's helped me. So I thought before I came here today that I would contact Heinrich Buhr. He's still alive, he's in his 90s, and he lives in a uh, assisted living in California in a place called Rose Rosedale. So I sent him an email, and he sent back an email congratulating me and telling me how lucky I am and how wonderful this place is and that they have a new building in chemical engineering, and he was still very proud of it at his age. So the other people I think I'd like to thank, first of all, is my wife. Um, she's a distinguished scientist and a professor in the state of New York and a member of the National Academy, but all that is not as important as the real accomplishment we did together, is the three sons, two of which are standing there, sitting there. Our third son could not come because he has two little babies and uh, I don't think it would have been good for him to leave. Uh, his wife may not have been too pleased. <laughs> um, I also like to thank, and so that's David and Gubby there, and of course I'd like to also thank Yana, my son who couldn't make it. I, I guess I need to thank them for their support, their love, and their criticism. They don't hold back on criticism. One of them is a lawyer, so you have to be very careful these days. Isn't it? Um, I also like to thank Rene Stern and family for coming. One of our family members is here. And, and then there's this very special person who came, and I think it's unbelievable that he came here. His name is Professor Shekhar Gardi. He asked the dean, he was the head of my department, and then he moved up to be the dean of the whole School of Engineering. And he said to me when I told him we were getting this award, he said, I'm coming with you. And he's sitting here too. So it's really, I'd just like to thank him. He's a very good friend and an internationally known scientist on the structure of water. Water is really important and its structure actually is endemic in, and closely uh, held with life. Um, the person I most miss, miss, of course, is my mother, Sophie Belfort, who lies in the Jewish Pineland Cemetery, not far from here. And we went to see her yesterday and Marlene's late mother too. Uh, she always taught me that learning and study and the, is the route to education and success and that I should never give up. And you know, students, we always go up and down, there's the cycle, and the hardest part is when you're at the bottom. And I think you've got to know that it's always going to come up, and if you work hard and you think about that, it will be very important for you, it will help you. Um, the last two things I want to say, and I promised the Vice Provost I would only talk for about four minutes, uh, excuse me, ten minutes, four minutes, um, was I think what I would, would advise or suggest you think about as a student is think about a good problem, problems that really count. Uh, and what I'm talking about is you have to do that with passion, and with creativity. It doesn't matter what field you're in, you need to think about a problem that really, and then you work really hard for this problem, and you will love it, and time will fly by and make a contribution to society, and that would be fantastic. I think you need to think big, just like Einstein, Lincoln, and Mandela. Think big, and you'll get there. What explains the difference between performance in different locations and different countries is really opportunity and system, the system. You are smart as, every, as anyone 
anywhere and your degree is from a top university and which is respected internationally. So you have a major advantage, students. South Africa has all the wealth and opportunity to build a fabulous career. Step out of the box and thank you UCT for this amazing honor. Congratulations to you graduates and go for it. Thank you very much. <laughs>